version 1.10 introduces a new impact analysis feature in our lineage view. Starting from our lineage view, we can see objects upstream such as raw customers, orders, and payments, and visually observe how they flow into our staging customers, orders, and payments, ultimately making their way into our customer table. This then feeds into our address and customer reporting, as well as our sales data mart, account models, and other downstream dashboards. This gives us a comprehensive view of everything that is happening. 1.10 has introduced the Impact Analysis button. Clicking here will provide convenient access to navigating the upstream and downstream nodes associated with this customer table. This is our first node. We can also look upstream, so reading to the left of the lineage hierarchy, you see that the node depth now reflects a value of negative 1. We can filter these results by various parameters, such as specific tag or domain. I can also increase the node depth up to three layers deep. Now we are seeing some of the raw information that we previously saw visually. This is another way to understand and visualize your lineage in a more tabular format, as opposed to a diagram. This can then be exported to use in various tools, such as a spreadsheet. Column level views are also supported, providing an even more comprehensive view. This shows the source table, source column, and the impacted column. Here, you see the source column of payment ID, but the impacted column is ID, so you clearly see the name migration. This feature provides another way to consume this lineage information. This also provides a simple method to control what columns appear in the grid. One10 introduces a new single sign-on application. This feature is now directly available in the UI. In previous versions, you would have to configure single sign-on with the help of your DevOps or support team that would configure the back-end changes. Now it just requires a few clicks. Start by clicking on Settings, then select SSO. We have a variety of providers available, such as Google, Azure AD, Okta, SAML, Auth0, and more. Let's take a look at Okta for this example, and select Configure. We see a variety of available fields, all of which have context help in the right pane. You'll see your secrets, clients, URIs, tenants, and more which are all configurable and thoroughly documented all right in the UI. We can also enable self sign up. This allows us to tailor the experience for new users to the company's guidelines regarding approvals, whether they get immediate access or need intervention to approve. Version 1.10 brings an enhanced user experience to domains and data products. These data products are a highly specialized way to create reusable assets and think about data from a consumer-producer mindset. Domains are an excellent way to provide context, accountability, and ownership over your assets. This update has made these tools more user-friendly and intuitive. Starting from the home page, we select Domain from the navigation. This page provides insights into any configured domains, including owners, glossary terms, and tags, as well as the ability to create, customize, and delete them. We can create a new domain here with a convenient UI slide out on the side. Filtering options are also available along with search and the ability to switch to a card view, making management easier. The other area of enhancement is data products. These are now their own area within the platform. In previous versions, they were a subset of domain. Clicking into data products provides us with a very similar view to domains, with owner, glossary terms, tags, and experts. We have a similar ability to search and filter, and we have that card view here as well. We can create a new data product here in a very similar experience as domain. These exciting updates make it that much easier to manage your data assets. In version 1.9, we released data contracts. And for version 1.10, we've taken into account user feedback and given that feature a facelift to make them resemble more of a legally binding agreement. 
we've really taken into account the business user and consumer in creating this update. Traditionally, when people think about data contracts, they are accustomed to entities like YAML files or similar, but we wanted to really make this as user-friendly as possible. You can quickly see if the contract is in a pending or approved status, and if any red lines need to be addressed. We have versioning and owners in addition to status. There is a free form description. And one of the additions we made here was the terms of service, how this contract should be leveraged. We also have this new SLA section. What is the freshness, the completeness, the latency, and the retention of this element? The associated schema and its status. We also have a new security element that we've added. We can see that classified information is part of this contract. Then, similar to schema, we have a status for the semantics. We also have the execution history, which makes it very simple to see when the contract has run successfully or failed. Going back to the top, we've also condensed the option buttons here. Click on settings and you'll see various options here. Then select Edit and you'll get a very similar experience as adding a new contract. We see the contract details, terms of service, schema, semantics, security, quality, and SLA. These new updates make this new feature even more powerful and easy to use.